everyone, and we are officially live. What is up? This is Mike Wall, and I'm back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Super stoked today, man. I'm joined by my my dude from Orlando, Florida, Mr. Daniel Rojas. We're going to be talking about how to get your business and your life organized so that you can sell millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of real estate and just be an overall happy person. So welcome to the show, Mr. Daniel Rojas. Thanks, Mike. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. So thank you. Yeah, man. So what's been going on in your life besides, you know, just winning a bunch of awards and unboxing them on Facebook? So that was that was interesting because I was I was really eager to see that. And only because of the fact that during the shareholder summit, when they actually put that slide up on the giant projector screens, I was actually eating a burger because I had missed lunch that day. So I wasn't I wasn't even in the room when that occurred. And it was funny because half of my team was there and they were all sending me pictures. They're like, where are you? You're not even in the room. And I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. So um, funny if they like, cut to you, man, and you just had like a mouthful of burger. You know, you were like, nom, nom, nom. Oh, man, it was a lot of fun. But I uh, know, I mean, the shareholder summit was unreal. I mean, getting that award finally, you know, we were walking the dogs. We came home. I just wrapped up another uh, locking in down another property for a client. And my wife was like, is that a package? And I was like, what else did you order from Amazon? <laughs> No kidding. Well, I've got something coming every day from Amazon Prime. Yeah, I'm addicted, man. I know, right? Actually, a friend of mine just he started a product, so he actually made me order something. So this is actually on the desk right next to me, which is even worse. But uh yeah, so I as soon as I saw it, I was like, I think I have a feeling what it is. And it was definitely wonderful to get that award and know that we're kind of like on the right path as a family and and, and our team's going. So Bro, it was, it was awesome. very exciting. Super excited for you, man. So let's uh let's set the world on fire here, man. Let's talk about um Tell me a little bit about, help the audience get to know you as a, how did you get into the industry? What is sort of your background, man? So ironically enough, my sister-in-law is the reason why I'm in real estate. They say don't do business with family, and I actually love it. Um, she had been begging me for about three years to switch, and I was like, no, you know, I've done the commission thing. I've done, you know, non-salary jobs, and I, I was comfortable where I was. Um, I was making <clears throat> decent pay salary-wise in uh, the hospitality industry, actually. Um, I was overseeing a few different restaurants, overseeing about like three to 500 employees. And I was comfortable until yeah. one day when I found out, uh, <laughs> my wife came to pick me up uh, from the motorcycle shop and she had a sour look on her face. And I was like, what's wrong? She's like, she's in the 100K oh. club again. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Your sister that took five vacations that we know of made over 100K in real estate. And so <laughs> obviously it didn't weigh well on myself or my, or my wife. Yeah. So for, we, we talked about it a lot over the weekend and on Monday I looked at her and I said, so do you trust me? And she says, yes. And I said, okay, good. I quit. <laughs> and she was like, wait, what? And I was like, no, no, no. I mean, I have a plan sort of, um, but let's go ahead and get going. And this was honestly only 13 months ago. It's not, hasn't been a very long journey, but it's been an exciting and awesome one to say the least. And so I actually started going to, her office um, to lunch and learns and trainings before I was even licensed. So I'm during the day I'm I'm, I'm sitting there taking my online courses and then uh, in between I'm going to the, the training at her office and and Gil Ramos is looking at me like he's like are you even licensed yet? Like what are you doing? I was like I'm here for the free lunches. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And <laughs> and so for a month straight uh, before I was licensed I was just eating on Gil's tab. But um, I learned a lot in all honesty. I, I, I started taking notes from the very beginning. I actually have this little black book and this is actually half the reason of my success is um, this little book right here. So from day one, I knew that going into a new field, a new industry that I was gonna have to be extremely organized and have everything down to a science because you know, in every state they give you um, the state uh, required obviously course and then yeah. the state required exam. And then they're like, go ahead, you can go ahead and do real estate. And then you get to the office and you realize you know nothing about real estate uh, and you're just kind of like cracked over the head and, and everyone's like, oh, good luck with everything. So I was fortunate enough to get put into an environment where they just wanted to coach us and teach us. And that was with originally with uh, Exit Realty. Yeah. And to be quite honest, I mean, it was fantastic. The culture was there. Um, Gil was always motivating us. Bobby Davidowitz was also there. And, you know, we were learning from these experts who 
had done anything and everything. And if it wasn't them, it was somebody else in the office that was doing, you know, whether it was luxury listings or um, specializing in short sales and REOs and wholesaling and flipping. And it was, it was where I needed to be without knowing it. Yeah. And then fast forward six, seven months, you know, I get a, I get a text message from, I can't say who, and they were like, Hey, let's fly out to Phoenix and check out this awesome new model. And so I had, you know, some volume under my belt. I was, I was gung ho. We had started putting together this resource drive on, on, on Google docs. And sure enough, uh, we landed in Phoenix. We met up with Carlos. We met up with Jake Kinder and Albie and Mike Reese. And I was like, okay, this is kind of strange that we're kind of like being under the radar. It's like, we're on a co-ops mission and we couldn't post anything. We couldn't say anything. And, um, all my clients are like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in a different state. So, <laughs> so another agent will be showing you properties, but, uh, yeah. uh, from there it just escalated, you know, within a month time from there, we switched over and it was, it was like night and day to be quite honest. I was the Guinea pig all over again. Um, I actually, I broke the transaction desk, uh, for documents here in Florida because my background is actually marketing from UCF. So everything for me has always been branding awareness and, and marketing at the end of the day. So when we switched from exit to EXP, originally there was no EXP logo at the top of all the documents. And I was like, well, you know, we got to change this. So I shot off an, a, a, an email, I sent a, a text chat and I was like, how do we get this changed? And somebody from transaction desk was like, oh, just send the logo to this email and they'll take care of it. So I was like, all right. So I sent the power team, our power team, we had it drawn up. Sean Romano is actually our creative director inside of our own team. And he is the one that drew up our logo. And so I sent that logo with EXP attached to it to Transaction Desk. And they actually put our logo at the top of all the documents for the entire office of Florida. They sent back an email saying, hey, it's all set. Your office is all set. And I was like, wait, wait, what do you mean the whole office? Because obviously in our model, it's one broker per state. <laughs> so I was like, uh, so I ran to my office. I ran to my computer. I was like, okay, did they... Did they switch it? And I pulled it up and it was blank. So I, I said to myself, okay, no big deal. Well, three days later in the Honey Badger Nation, all these little images started popping up. It's like, oh, does anybody else get this on their documents? Who else is seeing this? Maybe it's a sign. And Todd Schroth is calling me. He's like, he's like, you broke it. You you really did put your logo at all the, all the, the top of all the documents. I've got Judy Grindstaff calling me. And she's like, do you care to explain how you managed to do this? And I was like, funny story. So um you know, we had our hiccups here and there, but it was really me just kind of testing and breaking the system. But um, in all honesty, you know, my, my volume last year was fantastic. Um, but this year I'm almost at that same exact mark. Um, and it's all been because of the extra tools with EXP. In all honesty, I've only wanted organization and structure. And before we even joined EXP, we were test, testing out different CRMs, front facing websites, even apps. And, you know, when we started onboarding, I was like, wait, so we get this amazing system that's already built for us and it's set on autopilot. I was like, all right, well, I'm game sold. Yeah. So uh, the support has been fantastic, but you know, 13 months in the business um, and to see these awards coming in and you know, we have the methodology and it's, it's so family oriented and based that it's, it's almost like as if where has this been the whole time? And it's been there, obviously the XP has been around for you know a little while now, but it's amazing to see that I'm, I'm so brand new and seeing this change go live right in front of me has been nothing but epic at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there's a ton to dig into there. Um, so I, what I want to know, and I, I'm curious because everybody has, you know, kind of their own backstory and answer to this question, but what was the, what was the, what was the switch that flipped in you um, where, you know, you went from the mindset of, you know what, I don't want to, I'm not doing a commit all commission job. I'm not doing that to I'm all in. Like, and just said, and, and telling your wife, you know, I, I quit. Like, what, so, what, was the, what was the switch that flipped in you? Like, I, like, how do you go from that mindset to that mindset literally overnight? So a lot of frustration at the job that I was at. Not, nothing more than the fact that I was, I was working a ton of hours. You know, I was working a job that should have been 40, 50 hours. And then when you see that you're clocking in and out at 60, 70 hours a week, and then to find out my sister's making like, you know, 40% more than what I'm making. And she has this amazing vacation lifestyle. And, you know, my wife and I don't travel a lot because we've got dogs, yeah. but even just the fact that I get to spend more time with my wife, um, I'd have less stress on my hands. Um, mm -hmm. And at the time <laughs> I thought I wouldn't be responsible for anyone, obviously with the family and team. Now 
I am responsible for more people, but it's, it's almost like a different type of responsibility. More, it's more so of like, uh, I feel responsible to give them the knowledge that I have versus looking over their shoulder and saying, no, don't do that. Make sure you do this. You forgot to do that. Um, and the mindset shift really came when my sister-in-law had, like I said, she had been pressing me for about three years to do this change and seeing that financial freedom that I had been looking for, if I wanted, if I had wanted to do that with my previous career, I would have had to open up six more restaurants to do so. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. And I look back now and even my wife says it all the time. She goes, could you imagine if you had actually gone through with that plan of opening up six more restaurants and how you never would have been home? And I was thinking to myself, no, I don't see it any other way because we were fortunate enough to, you know, my sister kind of knocked some sense into us and it took off from there only because of the education and training. Was it scary? Absolutely. I mean, I, we only had X amount in the bank and I said, listen, we've got five and a half to six months to go before this thing runs out and before we got to kick this thing off. And in all honesty, I was more surprised in my wife's response to it because for me, I, you know, things have always been in my hands when it comes to my end goal or my end resolution. So I, I know that I'm going to put the, the pedal to the metal. I'm going to grind it out and I'm going to get it done. But when my wife looked at me and she said, you know, I trust you, that's when I was like, okay, it's serious now. So I'm really doing this. And um, that was the shift in all honesty, just wanting that financial freedom, being able to have my own schedule, be my own boss and to be able to, you know, spend more time with my family. You know, my mom, my mom jokes, she goes, I haven't seen you this much since since before college. And I was like, that's a good thing. <laughs> so it's, it's it's allowed a lot of uh, benefits in our lives, to say the least, for sure. And we're we're definitely on a much happier scale than we were before. Talk about some of the lessons learned in the hospitality and service industry that are still serving you now today in real estate. So organization and structure, hands down. You know, in, in, in the restaurant industry, the ones that succeed are the ones who have portfolios that are cookie cutter at the end of the day. Yeah. So they, if they want to replicate and they want to do, as we say, scale it or build it, scale it, sell it. And if they really want to do it, the model, the way it needs to be done, they have to make it literally so that there's a giant binder book and everything is cookie cutter to the T, the recipes, the way you onboard, the way you train and the way that everything's set up. So in all honesty, I just applied that to real estate and um, the dedication that it takes to, to time block everything out. Because, you know, as you know, obviously in the hospitality industry, lunch, dinner, and if you have brunch on the weekends, um, that's something that you don't have time to be able to be preparing midway through that. You need to be have, have prepared, you know, days in advance, weeks in advance. You got to plan that schedule out depending on if there's a holiday, if there's a sporting event, if there's multiple sporting events, if there's a parade and all the roads are shut down, you need to make sure that you let your, you know, your team members know at each restaurant, Hey, don't take this route or leave 35 minutes earlier because you're, you're not going to be able to make it. And so I basically took the organization structure from there and just reconfigured it slightly so the time blocking is there throughout the week. Obviously, I have when I'm going to do my showings. I'm going to have when I do my listing appointments. I'm going to have my cold calls. I'm going to have my, you know, we even do cold calling now for agents as well. So it's not just clients. We do agents as well. Excuse me. We have a call night on Wednesdays that we basically just go down and we call every agent that we know. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to time blocking because if not, you're going you're gonna to run yourself thin and then you're not going to have any time to prepare for anything. When, I, when people say, a lot of agents, they know they can reach out to me right away via text, via phone call, and I'll answer. But when it comes down to being able to sit down and prepare, they know I'm booked a week to two weeks out. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, I don't have enough time to prepare, whether it's a CMA or whether it's something that an agent actually needs, like some kind of training. Um, and if I'm getting multiple agents asking me at once for the same thing, well, then instead of you know spending extra time and spinning my wheels, I just make a video out of it. So We've 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 taken the organization structure from from the hospitality industry and just applied it to real estate as well as on, I mean checklists checklists all day we've got an onboarding checklist that's from the second that you're done onboarding with EXP and that includes things such as like for new agents whether they need to join the realtor board um, and get their MLS all set up to uh, marketing because we also train them how to be social marketing gurus yeah. and we actually teach a tactic that converts and copies their Facebook profile into an actual business page. So say somebody has 1,500 friends. Well, obviously, experience is perception, and perception is everything, right? Yeah. So how do, we, how do we take agents, whether they've been in the business for five minutes, 
or 50 years, how do we make them look super professional like they've been doing this the whole time? So we found this method to go ahead and if they have a thousand friends, well, we go ahead and convert their profile and now they've got a business page with a thousand likes because that perception kind of gives them an added edge. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're professional. It just gives them that opportunity to open up more doors for them. Yeah. So this checklist includes everything from, uh, like I said, the, the local realtor board to the MLS, to setting up all of your profiles, whether it's realtor.com, zillow.com, homes.com, and then your Facebook page. And then we really get you into a boot camp. So really at the end of the day, what we did was we just took a lot of systems as far as orientation from the hospitality industry with a checklist binder, with everything, all the recipes, and we just put it and applied it to real estate, which has made my life easier because, you know, as, as my business partner, Andrew Brooks has said multiple times, he's like, I thought we got out of the industry to stop managing people. And now we went right back in and now we're recruiting everybody and we're training them. And I was like, but the difference is now it's in our hands. So we get to make it as easy as we want. And so we've set ourselves up for success, but not just us, but also our agents, because these are the things that we did right as soon as we got on board. And these were the things that made us successful. So clearly it works. We just needed to make it systematic for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, and not only that, but you like now you can leverage EXP, right? For their back oh. technology, which is it, it, which helps support you, right? To know that, you know, there's training literally every single day of the week based on wherever you're at in your business is certainly something um, that, that, uh, that I'm sure you feel good about telling other agents about, and then the back end technology as well to help support, you know, lead generation and lead conversion and so forth and so on. It's funny you mentioned that because we used to have a lot of extra steps in our checklist, but EXP has actually kind of eliminated some of our steps. Exactly why you just said, because the training, some people, they couldn't make our 10 to 12 training in, on thir Tuesdays and Thursdays in the office. So, for those folks, we just sent them directly to the virtual world and now they're getting even better training on a daily basis. So it eliminated a lot of extra steps for us. And I mean, the technology, listen, I'm a nerd. I started I started UCF as an aerospace engineer. So technology has always been my thing. Bobby Davidovitz makes so much fun of me every now and then. He's always joking. He's like, if Dan's excited, I'm excited because you know it takes a lot to get me going when it comes to technology because I want to see it work well. And you're right. these these. The systems that they've given us for technology has only made our lives easier and our agents' lives easier. I mean, being able to generate 40 to 60 leads a month for free, I mean, that's that's kind of tough to pull off in any in any business or any any brokerage, but let alone whether you're new or whether you're switching and jumping on board. So these these tools have made it a lot easier and, and also to keep tabs on everybody. The automation behind everything, that's just a bonus, but you know, because you're supposed to be reaching out and, and, and creating and cultivating these relationships at the end of the day. But you're right. I mean, making the switch has made it a lot easier for us. That's why that's why I've been able to be successful in my personal business, as well as be able to coach and train everybody else to be successful in theirs yeah. and not have to give up so much. So yeah, leveraging EXP has been beautiful. Um, and everybody, that's the beautiful thing about EXP is that the culture and the family is there. So the support systems are naturally built in, whether it's through, um, the online trainings or whether it's just through our platforms that we use on a daily basis, you yeah. know, being able to ask a question and get it answered by a hundred agents in under a minute, where else can you do that right now? So no doubt, man. What, so I'm curious, what's the biggest mistake you see agents making as it relates to organization and structure right now? Uh, time blocking for sure. Okay. Um, and, and the second thing that, that I'm going to really stress on and harp on is that agents tend to, try to do too much at once you know doing three or four things at once to try and get your business going is is fine by me in all aspects but you see agents trying to do 18 things at once and what they end up doing is they start 18 little projects yeah. and then they never finish any of those projects so people try to take on too much because they want to test out different niches which is totally fine but just pick a handful enough that you can you can take it you know bobby always criticizes uh, well, he doesn't criticize me, but he always he always jokes and says, do you ever sleep? And I was like, well, I sleep like four or five hours a night. It helps. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's because of the fact that I really do only do a few projects at a time. And we delegate a lot because we trust our family and our team. So my business partners are Sean Romano and Andrew Brooks. And Sean Romano is our creative director. I mean, we're pumping out video content. We're doing we're pumping out a new webisode series called Around the Town, where we go and interview local businesses. But Sean's just the creative one to just edit direct at the end of the day. I kind of have an oversee oversight for the entire project, but then we have Yasmin who's the one that books it. So yeah. delegation is key 
and time blocking is key and making sure that you're not overstretching yourself and making sure that you just do a few things at a time versus trying to do everything at once. So to that agent out there right now who, you know, just feels like their, their world is completely chaotic and they, they know, they think inherently they know that, you know, time blocking could help. Like what, what do you recommend like somebody like that doing? How do you recommend like starting to time block? So two things is what I'm going to recommend and they're technology oriented. So one of them is real simple, Google calendar. I put everything in there. And when I have my time blocks, it will literally say from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. It's call time from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's call time. And then anything else throughout the week, I, I kind of fill in the gaps, but Let's say, for example, I'm doing a series of showings. And what I do is in the showing itself on the, on the little event that I put on the calendar, it actually has all the details for the showing when I get there because uh, learning from experience, there were times where I'd show up to a property and not have any cell phone service. So I couldn't open the MLS app to go ahead and tell my, proper, my client like, hey, this is an 1800 foot, yeah. three bed, two bath with a pool, whatever it was. So Google um, has a lot of tools for us for free. And for sure, the time blocking on there, setting up your calendar in advance, and then only doing a few things at a time. Because people think that I'm on social media 24-7 from what they see. What they don't see is that I'm actually only on it from like 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday. And what I'm doing is I'm scheduling out all of my posts for the week. So yeah. sure, I may be teaching a class on a Thursday at 10 a.m. And then suddenly a post pop up and everyone's like, wait, how did he do that? And I'm like, because I'm technically multitasking, but I time blocked it out in advance. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another secret that I highly recommend, and you don't have to use this particular app. I use it because it's convenient for me. But I use an app called Wonderlist. And basically, it's my giant to-do list of everything that I need to do. And in there, when I have free spaces on my time block, I go ahead and I start scrolling through that to-do list. Because sometimes it's not necessarily that I don't have something to do. It's just that it might be 3 p.m. and I haven't had my second cup of coffee. So I don't know where to go is really what it is. Right. So what I'll do is if there's nothing on the calendar for that moment in time, then I go right down that to-do list and I'm like, okay, I forgot to email so-and-so. Okay, now's a perfect time to call and catch up on that client. Okay, now I remember that I was supposed to reach out to that agent and invite them out to a lunch or you know, invite them out to uh, Margaritaville Resort like we're going tomorrow. So between the two of them, it's almost like a personal assistant at the end of the day because it's almost helping keep me on track whether I, whether I know I'm doing it intentionally or not. I mean, besides hiring an assistant that's going to be nagging you and over your shoulder the whole time, these are the best two things that I've found personally that I think would help any agent, whether new or experienced, to kind of really take it to the next level when it comes to organization and structure. Yeah. So like the Wonderlist app, are you like adding stuff to that all day, every day? All day, every day, because I, if I don't write it down, I will forget within 30 minutes. So I'm one of those personalities that I'm, I'm a visual learner. So if you say something to me, I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll get that done. But at the end of the day, unless I write it down, I'm not going to remember. So as the day goes on, as things occur, um, as contracts go pending, I'm like, okay, this contract just went pending. These are the things I need to do. So I got to schedule the inspection and make sure the escrow instructions get to my client and follow up with them to make sure I get the receipt and everything else that goes along with it. So as the day goes on from the second I'm up, um, we go, I go ahead and I start adding stuff to that to-do list. Yeah. And in all honesty, it's, it's what's been the key to my success is just that organization at the end of the day. And you like, like I've never, like I wrote this down. I'll, you can bet I'll be downloading that app as soon as we get off here. But um, is that something that's like, like once you do it, like you can check it off on the list? Yeah, absolutely. So it, the app is beautiful for a few reasons. So it's a giant to-do list. And I actually have it right here and I can show you it. Uh, I don't know if it'll show up on the screen, but the app looks like like this little one on the bottom right, right there with a little star. Yeah. So when you click it, this this is, you can set multiple different lists. So for our Around the sh Town show, we have like a, a, a oh, list of, of venues, um, real estate ads, Fizbos that I see. So when I'm driving around, I actually will stop and I'll take a picture of a Fizbo um, and I'll add their address and I'll add their phone number in. So when I have time later on, I make sure that I follow up with them. Like if it's my Fizbo time block, I'm like, okay, yeah. this is what this is the time when I need to follow up on those four that I just drove by. Um, but the beautiful part is that you can actually check them all off and then say you wanted to share it with, if you do have an assistant, you're able to share it so that they can also add things to your um, wonder list. So Sean, Andrew, and I, we share multiple lists because we obviously have to delegate and kind of take responsibility because 
once you get to a certain point with that many agents, it's kind of tough to do it on your own, obviously without leveraging EXP. But uh, we found a system that's healthy for us and we share lists. Even my wife, we share the grocery list. So Dude, that's we, awesome, man. I like it. So it's it's been fantastic. I can't remember who who recommended it to me, but I've been using it well before I did real estate. But it's been it's been a thing of beauty, uh, to to say the least. So yeah, that's a great hack, man. Um, because I'm a very visual learner too. Like and and, and like I'm a like I love to to see that. Like if I if like I'll write mine down. Like I'll print out a copy of my schedule and I'll write like my to do list on my schedule. And then I'll literally go down and like cross it out. It feels yeah. so good to like make that cross through. But to have it on your phone and with you at all times, I think is brilliant, man. And, and especially if you can go in and kind of check everything off, I think that's a, a great nugget. I hope everybody um, uh, writes that down and, and is able to download the app. Is it free? It is free. You don't have to pay for it, which is the beautiful part. I love free things. That's why I use oh, yeah. everything. And that's also why I love EXP because our CRM is amazing. And it's included. So, <laughs> so, so that's but, yeah. all. So, so time blocking and um, and then using that the app the Wonderlist app has just been um, something that's really helped you I guess put organize things and put things in perspective and make you more productive right correct yes because I'm the type of person I will get everything done you just have to tell me and you have to remind me and I, I'm capable of getting a lot done but if I don't have an assistant or or somebody over my shoulder these are the next two best things to be quite honest especially when you're starting out and you don't have the money to pay for an assistant I mean these things are are gold yeah. So what is like, tell me what a typical day looks like for you. So I'll get up between, you know, I'm trying to get better about it. I used to get up at like 5, 36 a.m., but I'm in Slack in these last few months, but I'm getting up between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. Uh, I do a mini workout. Uh, we, we rotate the dogs. My wife has been doing that more than myself lately because we've got two of our own and then we're fostering a third right now. So they don't get along. So it's kind of like two sets of rotations. Oh, yeah. Um, but after that, actually, before I even get like fully dressed and everything like that, I'm on an 8 a.m. call with my business partners every morning. Yeah. Um, Saturdays and Sundays, we do at 9 a.m. just because it's the weekend. But 8 a.m., I'm on the phone with Andrew and Sean. And it's not just to talk about business. It's also to see personally what's going on because, you know, as business partners, I need to know what's going on in their lives just as they need to know what's going on sure. in mine. So I know that if Andrew's in charge of A, B, and C and Sean's in charge of D, E, F, well, if something happens to either of them, we need to pick up the slack for them or vice versa. If I've got too much going on, hey, can you help me out with this? Um, we also talk about our schedule for the day. So we know where any of us are. So if any of our agents are like, hey, I need to meet with Andrew, where where is he right now? And I'm like, okay, he's at a closing right now. He's going to be out in about 45 minutes. What can I help you with? Um, so after that, obviously finish up getting ready. I'm in the office by 9 a.m. And at that point in time, I'm making calls actually on the way into the office on the Bluetooth on speakerphone. So I'm making calls to either cold calls or clients or other agents following up on offers. After that, it's kind of just plugging away at the to-do list um, up until a certain time. But it, it depends on the day of the week, because if it's a Tuesday or a Thursday, I might be teaching a class or I might be attending a different class that uh, kind of enhances or is giving me more levels to my to my knowledge. Um, after that, it's a quick lunch or a business lunch meeting. We try to book meetings throughout the week all the time. Um, so typically lunches are, 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 are not solo. They're lunches with typically other agents, uh, looking to join EXP or agents that we're trying to close a few deals with. Yeah. Um, and then in the afternoon, it's the second cup of coffee for sure. <laughs> and then after that is when I kind of go a little brain dead and that's when I'm checking the to-do list to be quite honest. Um, it depends on the day of the week too, because we have our, like I said, we have our agent call night on Wednesdays and then on Thursdays we have our client call night. So four to 6 PM that's blocked out at home, depending on the day, anywhere between five and seven, um, either the wife's just cooked something and I'm, I'm, I'm gunning at home or I'm cooking something before she gets home. And then, uh, after that, it's just a few more follow-ups on social media to touch a few things up and then just tying up any loose ends at the end of the day. So that's that's generally Monday through Friday, depending on if we have any showings or any closings. So, wow, man, you're booked, aren't you? Yes. Um, people look at my calendar and they think it's a nightmare. <laughs> so. But the, the, the great thing about wh what I'm hearing you say is that you know I can always tell if I'm talking to one of my agents if um, if 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 things are out of order or chaotic in their lives that they're not following a calendar. I think the great thing about following a calendar is that you can always look back and know you were productive versus wondering if you were productive, right? And you can always go back and track, 
um, your activity as it relates to the results you're getting, right? So if you're not getting the results, you can go back and look at your activity and know that, you know, you weren't in your 20%. Correct. And and so like, I just love, I love the idea of following a calendar, especially during the business week and, uh, and, and just creating that order and structure, you know what I mean? So that you know you have a platform to be successful. Yep, I tell you, I live and die by that calendar. I actually panicked because uh, when I, I just recently upgraded phones and when I did, it didn't load everything at once, especially that wonder list. And I yeah. freaked out at the store. I was, <laughs> I had a mild heart attack and I said, no, this can't be. That list has a lot and I need it. And they were like, just give it five minutes. And sure enough, five minutes later it was there, but I did have a mild heart attack inside the store that day. Yeah, so. that, that's, 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 I think that's golden, man. So, you know, one thing we didn't touch on, but I'm interested in hearing your story as well. And I know you guys are, are fairly new um, to EXP, but what was the real reason you left, man? Like for you, and I'm not, I don't mean for your team, but I mean for you. So seeing the opportunity at hand, it's, it's crazy because there's a lot of reasons people get attracted to eXp. You know, we preach the five reasons, right? Leads, training, stock, rev share, and culture. And for me, Gil Ramos has always been a huge mentor of mine. And I always said, wherever you go, I'll go. And, and there's been times where I'm like, listen, are we going down the right path? But I've never been steered wrong by him. I got to say that the number one reason really was him at the end of the day, yeah. because if a man like him, who's, you know, he was the number one exit office in, I think all of Florida for four years running. And if this is a man willing to, you know, demolish his own office and his own, you know, awards to, to give us a better opportunity, I was like, listen, this has got to be the truth because at the end of the day, we were sitting there and he was he was trying to figure out a way how to pay us more because we were getting paid 70 30 and he's like we got to figure this out you guys got to make more money and this was it you know that trip to phoenix was everything that we needed to hear we actually had a private mastermind with jay and alby and that's actually what sold it for me at the end of the day yeah. we sat there and seeing guys at their level talking to us like you know eating breakfast with us like it was nothing and I was like, is this, is this real? Does this even happen? Because you typically see people at the top making that kind of money and you don't see them eating with the rest of us. Yeah. You don't see them, you know, masterminding with just 20 of us at an Airbnb before summit. I mean, these guys don't have to do that. They had to speak that day. They had a schedule to keep and these guys taking time out of their hands. So I was like this, it felt right. It felt like a family. It felt like all the pieces kind of aligned together for what we were looking at. And the rest was just bonuses. And, you know, people say that the number five reason is culture, that that's the reason why they join. For me, that was the number one, to be quite honest. I'm going to make the money anywhere I go because I, I want to work to that point where I don't have to worry about the money. But the culture, you can't replicate that anywhere else, to be right. quite honest. You can't fake it. And when I saw it here, I was like, listen, you know, whether we make money or here, here or not, at least I know I'll be happy. And of course, we made the money as well. But that culture, man, I, I couldn't pass something like that up. It, it, it felt great. That's awesome, man. So, you know, we'll put a bow on this one, but I'm curious, man, if people want to reach out to you, um, you know, maybe to, to find out what your checklist looks like or get a copy of your checklist or um, find out more about how you run your real estate business or find out more about eXp, how do you recommend that they get in touch with you, Dan? So um, you guys can text me, you guys can email me, Facebook me, any of them. I mean, you reached out to me on Facebook and I responded within, you know, what, 30 minutes on, on the page. And that, that's delayed on notifications. So I was able, I'm lucky I was able to get that in time. Um, but in all honesty, find me on Facebook, friend request me. I'm super easy to find, Dan Ross. Um, I've got a page, go ahead and like it as well, please. Thank you. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to text me too, I mean, my number's all over the place. It's on my website, which is, um, my website is listed dot real estate no dot com um and that actually goes to my kb core site which is great but my phone number my email address are all over that and yeah i'd be happy to share that checklist um and i'd be happy to share any of the apps or any of the tools that we use to make our lives a lot easier awesome brother well thanks so much for coming on the show and as always i just love sharing these stories week after week because i know exp is literally changing agents financial lives my own included do me a big favor if you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcast and subscribe. If you want to learn more about why eXp is the fastest growing real estate company in the country, or you're just interested in growing your real estate business, head on over to explodingwealth.com. And if you want to jump on a call with me and learn how I sold 
300 properties in only my fourth year in the business. Go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Brother, that was awesome, man.